Your boy is Benny Hanna. Cake on the mic, cake on the mic. Cake on the mic, cake on the mic. Uh. Boy, that's the intro. Sacramento, Sacramento, California, born and raised. And Antelope is where I spend most of my days. Of my Talk bad about my team, you must be a clown. This is Keek on the mic, so you know you better bear down. Bear down. Hey, what's going on, Bears fans? Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Keek on the Mic. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification to catch all Bears content right here on the podcast. Before I continue with today's episode, once again, I just want to thank you guys so much for all the support that you guys have been showing the podcast. The numbers, the engagement have been absolutely insane on all my videos. And I just can't thank you guys enough for all the support and love you guys show Keek on the mic. So we all know that free agency is about a month away. And for the last couple of episodes, I've been talking about players that the Chicago Bears should add. But we need to start considering the players that Ryan Poles may need to Resign with only 37 bears under contract going into the 2022 season. Ryan Poles has a lot of work to do. And we already know that he has a lot of holes to fill, not only trying to add players, but re-signing key free agents uh, and bringing them back to Chicago and making sure they're a part of the Chicago Bears franchise for the 2022 season. So like I said, the Bears only have 37 players under contract for the 2022 season and roughly $40 million in cap space. And and obviously cap space is an interesting thing because that can change with trading players, cutting players. So the anticipation is after we trade maybe some players, maybe we cut some guys, maybe we can have up to $60 million in cap space. So we would have plenty of, of money to spend and fill a lot of holes. And it's going to be up to Ryan Poles to make sure uh, that the roster can compete like he wants the Bears to as early as next year. So on today's podcast, I'm going to go through the unrestricted uh, Chicago Bears free agents, which I believe we have about 28 unrestricted free agents. And I'm going to go through each one and I'm going to let you guys know if I would resign them or if I would let them walk. So like always, when I go through these lists of guys, this is just my opinion you can also comment down below your opinion if you would let resign this guy or would you, in fact, let them walk. I welcome that, and let's have a nice conversation today about it. So here we go. Number one on the list is wide receiver Allen Robinson. Obviously, people have been going back and forth uh, if they would let Allen Robinson walk or would they resign him. Um, I know Allen Robinson has a lot of supporters uh, in in Chicago, amongst the Chicago Bears fans, and, and it's starting to look like Allen Robinson – uh, will in fact walk in free agency. But if I was GM Ryan Poles, obviously we need to f- bring in some receivers or re-sign Allen Robinson. That's going to be a huge hole to fill if in fact Allen Robinson does walk. The good news is that we've been talking about it for the last couple of weeks. The receiver market in this free agency period is heavy. You know, I don't need to really mention repeat names. We've been talking about it for the last couple of weeks. It's deep. But if I was in Ryan Pohl's shoes, I would do everything possible uh, in order to re-sign Allen Robinson. And that's just me. I know a lot of people are going to comment down below on this podcast and say, well, I'm just going to let him walk. But when you look at Allen Robinson, he has been an absolutely true professional, especially while he's being sabotaged by Matt Nagy. Uh, He continued to be a true professional, uh, a a locker room leader. Uh, Obviously, the numbers were down, but I don't blame him for those numbers because Matt Nagy was that bad. And a little bit of me wants to see if there can actually be a connection between him and Justin Fields. That's something that I'm still curious about. Obviously, we saw that connection between him, uh, Justin Fields and Darnell Mooney, but I really want to see it between him and Allen Robinson. Just because you bring Allen Robinson back doesn't mean you can't still draft the wide receiver. Doesn't mean you still can't add to the wide receiver position, right? So if I was Ryan Poles, I would in fact re-sign Allen Robinson and bring him back uh, to the Chicago Bears for the 2022 season. I'm not gonna on this episode. I'm not going to give my prediction of like contracts uh, or money or years or whatever. 
I'm just going to say if I would resign them or let them walk. If you guys want to try to guess what they would give these guys uh, to come back to Chicago, be my guest in the comment section. But for the purpose of this video, I am not going to do that. Number two on the list is defensive tackle Akeem Hicks. Once again, uh, I, I can repeat this until I'm blue in the face. I feel like when Akeem Hicks is healthy, he is still very much a dominant piece to this Chicago Bears defense. And that's the key word. When Akeem Hicks is healthy. This one's tough because I know we're going to be split. There's going to be some Bears fans saying, hey, we need to re-sign Akeem Hicks. And there's going to be a lot of Bears fans on this that comment on this episode saying, no, we need to let him walk. And I can agree with both angles. For the purpose, for me, this is just my opinion. I would re-sign Akeem Hicks. I've, I've been saying this for the last couple of weeks. If he is willing to take a discount to stay in Chicago, which I think a lot of you guys don't think he will be willing to, but I think, I beg to differ, I think he may be willing to stay in Chicago, take a discount, and uh, stay on this defense. I would re-sign Akeem Hicks, and maybe maybe if they can get him to be like, all right, seven to eight million range, sign him for two years. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about contract, but maybe if they can get him to go to that number, I would be comfortable to bring back Akeem Hicks. Can you imagine in the new 4-3 defense that Ibra Flus is going to be running, right, that he's bringing into Chicago? You're going to need quality defense alignment, uh, and I think, obviously, Akeem Hicks fits the mo mold of of a really good 4-3 defense. It, obviously, I know it's a business. Um, just like Allen Robinson, it's looking like Akeem Hicks will probably go, probably walk, let him walk, and he will hit free agency. But if I was Ryan Poles, I would try to do everything in my power to maybe work out a, a deal uh, that works b well for both sides. Maybe he can just take a discount and, in fact, re-sign Akeem Hicks to the Chicago Bears roster. Number three on the list, we have defense tackle Blau Nichols. Uh, obviously, once again, we're going to that 4-3 scheme. Uh, and a lot of Bears fans seem to think that it's going to be between Akeem Hicks and Blau Nichols, one or the other. I, a lot of Bears fans are thinking that we're not going to re-sign both. So it's going to be one or the other, and I, sometimes I agree. If there is a situation where we can re-sign them both, though, if I was Ryan Poles, that's what I would do. I would also re-sign Bilal Nichols because, once again, we're moving to that 4-3 defense. You're going to need some defensive tackles, and both Akeem Hicks and Bilal Nichols have been two, two of the best defensive linemen that the Bears have had over the last couple years. Obviously, Ryan Pace was the one that drafted Bilal Nichols a couple years ago in the fifth round. It was a great find. And Bilal Nichols has produced in a big way for this Chicago Bears defense. I know a lot of Bears fans would probably say if they had to choose between one or the other, I think obviously you have to go with Bilal Nichols because obviously he's the younger option. But if there is a way that we can re-sign both, I would re-sign Akeem Hicks and Bilal Nichols back to the, to the Chicago Bears. Number four on the list, we have quarterback Andy Dalton. This is not going to take long. I would let Andy Dalton walk. Obviously, we... Sign him to a one-year, $10 million deal. Uh, I feel like it's the worst $10 million we ever spent. Obviously, Andy Dalton uh, is a good guy. I feel like he's a good leader. But at the end of the day, um, I think you let Andy Dalton walk um, because you already have another quarterback in Nick Foles that's taking a lot of your cap space as well. So I just don't think there's any reason to re-sign Andy Dalton. So I would let Andy Dalton walk. Number five, we have tight end Jimmy Graham. I would also let Jimmy Graham walk. Obviously, his production went down. Uh, Matt Nagy didn't really use his tight ends a lot. Um, but just looking at Jimmy Graham's age uh, and us Bears fans wanting Cole Komet to take the next step. And obviously, you have guys like Jesse James that you can resign, uh, J.P. Holtz, right? Uh, Horstead, whatever. You have a lot of other young guys in the tight end room that can step up and hopefully produce for the Chicago Bears offense uh, next season. So I would let Jimmy Graham walk. Number six, we have offensive lineman Jermaine Fetty. Obviously, offensive lineman is going to be a huge emphasis for Ryan Poles uh, this offseason. But for the purpose of this, I would let Jermaine Effetti walk. And the reason why I would let J Jermaine Effetti walk, because he has been pretty inconsistent. You know, obviously, he's been dealing with some injuries as of last season. Uh, and I feel like he's just inconsistent. He's not always the uh, the best player on the offensive line, right? And another reason, he also got outplayed by rookie uh, Larry Borum. So, obviously, you have some young offensive linemen that you can build around. And I just don't think Jermaine Effetti... Uh, fits what Ryan Poles wants to do uh, with the Chicago Bears offensive line. So I would let Jermaine Effetti walk. 
Obviously, on number seven, we have safety to Sean Gibson. Uh, I would also let Deshaun Gibson walk, and I would be in a search for a new uh, safety. And this is going to be a big deal. You know, obviously, uh, Gibson has been a solid player, has been a, a positive influence on the locker room, especially with the young guys. Uh, but I think it may be time to try to find a true, strong safety. And uh, I know some Bears fans may say, well, why don't you just re-sign him for, to a one-year deal? And that can also be possible. But for the purpose of this video, I, I think – this offseason, I would probably put more focus on trying to get a, a true strong safety uh, or maybe even draft a true strong safety. I know in my first mock draft, uh, I had the Bears selecting in the second round uh, that strong safety from Penn State. Maybe that's an option. Or maybe uh, Tyron Matthews out there. He can probably come in and play strong safety. You never know uh, where, where things will lead uh, in trying to find a new strong safety. But I think it is very crucial for Ryan Poles to find a true strong safety so Eddie Jackson can go back to his normal free safety spot. And I know this one will hurt. This is going to be kind of a toss-up for most Bears fans, but I would let uh, Gibson walk. Number eight, we have offensive lineman James Daniels. Obviously, I think if we do let James Daniels walk, he's going to be one of the better guards in free agency. Uh, but I think we should prioritize bringing James Daniels back. I think he's been a, a pretty consistent player on the offensive line. Um, and I think those are the type of guys – that Ryan Poles wants to keep around. He he's young. He like I say, he plays consistent football, uh, and and I think if you re-sign him, you got something cooking, right? You got your two young tackles. You bring you re-sign James Daniels. Uh, obviously, we still need to try to find maybe a left tackle, uh, but other than that, and then of course a center. But then you got to start uh, something going here, right? But I feel like James Daniels uh, deserves another contract. I feel like he's been a really good player for the Chicago Bears offensive line. Uh, and I don't know what a contract's going to look like for James Daniels, but but it may be a little bit pricey. But I'm I'm willing to extend him to a nice little deal to keep him in Chicago for the next couple of years. So I would resign James Daniels. Number nine, we have wide receiver Jakeem Grant. Obviously, I would resign re uh, Jakeem Grant. I think Ryan Poles needs to prioritize Jakeem Grant um, not only as your top special teamer as a return man, all that stuff, but as a gadget player for Luke Getz's offense, right? I don't think any Bears fans will disagree with me in regards to Jakeem Grant. Every time he touches the ball, he's electric. Every time he touches the ball, he is a threat to take it all the way and score touchdowns. And what Ryan Poles' vision is, is he wants this offense to be explosive. Not only Ryan Poles, but Matt Eberflus has also said it many times that he wants this team to be fast, explosive, big playability. Well, guess what? That's what Jakeem Grant brings to the Chicago Bears. So I think Ryan Poles needs to prioritize bringing back Jakeem Grant. So if I was in his shoes, I would definitely re-sign Jakeem Grant. Number 10, we have offensive lineman Jason Peters. Uh, obviously, Jason Peters is one of the more consistent guys at 41 years old. He was probably one of the more consistent guys on this offensive line. And there was times where Jason Peters would get hurt. And this offensive line would fold without him. So he, the future Hall of Famer, uh, put in really good, valuable time on the Chicago Bears offensive line. But for this purpose, I think Ryan Poles wants to get younger. And I agree with him. I think we should get younger. Uh, so I think I would end up letting Jason Peters walk. But don't get me wrong. I appreciate everything uh, Jason Peters did for this football team. He came in. Um, not only did he play consistent valuable football for this offensive line when we desperately needed him but he was a true leader and he was probably a really good mentor for our young players and especially on the offensive line for this football team number 11 we have pat o'donnell obviously you need to uh re-sign your specialist right uh, i believe pat o'donnell has been here for eight years now and i feel like when you look at punters he's he's been pretty consistent i don't know really i don't really know how you judge punters but He's been consistent. He's a good locker room guy. Uh, but I think Ryan Poles is going to try his best to keep all the specialists together. Obviously, the only specialist that's under contract is uh, Cairo Santos. So I think he's going to keep them all together, and I agree with him. I would resign Pat O'Donnell. Number 12, we have tight end Jesse James. I would resign tight end Jesse James. I would. I know um, I let Jimmy Graham walk earlier, but I would resign Jesse James just for the fact that him and Justin Fields did create that connection in last preseason. So I would, obviously you have Cole Komet as number one, but I would bring Jesse James back and see maybe 
if the connection was a real thing, which I truly believe it is. So uh, I would definitely bring back Jesse James. Number 13, we have running back Damian Williams. I would let Damian Williams walk. I feel like Damian Williams had a pretty good year. Uh, when he got his reps, he made the most out of it. Uh, I feel like he was a good rotational piece for the running back room. But here's the thing. The running back room is crowded. You have David Montgomery, Khalil Herbert, Tariq Cohen, hopefully coming back healthy. So the running back room is super crowded. And maybe some Bears fans will comment down on this video and say, hey, maybe we keep Damian Williams and you cut Tariq Cohen. I'm not sure how you guys feel about that. But but for me, if I was in Ryan Pohl's shoes, I would let Damian Williams walk um, and see what Tariq Cohen has when he is healthy. Number 14, we have safety Dion Bush. I would resign Dion Bush. Obviously, he's he's been a valuable uh, piece uh, on the Chicago Bears special teams. Obviously, he played some valuable reps as as a rotational piece for the safety room. And I and and I think when you really look at some of these guys like Dion Bush, and I know um, Houston Carson is coming up as well, you keep those guys because they are our special team aces, and they also provide value. Uh, they are valuable. Uh, in terms of subs for their certain position. So I would definitely bring back Dion Bush. Number 15, we have linebacker Alec Ogletree. And and Alec Ogletree is obviously a cool, really cool story. You know, uh, we, we had just invited him in. We He just came in at the right time, right? Uh, obviously, Danny Trevathan was having injury issues, right? So he was basically out for most of the year. And Alec Ogletree fit right in, Uh and played really good, consistent football for the Chicago Bears. Obviously, I think uh, finding a lot of good linebackers, maybe younger linebackers, is going to be an emphasis for for Ryan Poles in this offseason because when you look at the Bears converting to a 4-3 defense, they are going to have to put an emphasis on finding finding a lot of good linebackers to play in that 4-3. And I feel like linebacker, uh, o- Alec Ogletree, deserves at least a one-year deal to come back uh, and play and see what he can do in this new 4-3 Chicago Bears defense. Number 16, we have wide receiver Marquise Goodwin. Like I said, this is going to be emphasis trying to add receivers, but I don't think Marquise Goodwin is going to be part of the plan. Obviously, uh, they in Matt Nagy's offense, uh, they didn't really use him a lot, uh, which was kind of frustrating because when you have a guy with Marquise Goodwin's speed, you think that they would incorporate him a little bit more in the offense, and maybe if they do re-sign Marquise Goodwin, Luke Getze would figure out a way to uh, incorporate Marquise Goodwin in the Chicago Bears offense. But if I was Ryan Poles, I would let Marquise Goodwin walk and maybe try to find um, some different receivers to come in and hopefully add a spark to the Chicago Bears offense. Number 17, we have linebacker Christian Jones. And just like Al Ogletree, I think when you look at Christian Jones, not only did he play valuable football in terms of rotational piece for the Chicago Bears defense at the linebacker position. Uh, But he's a valuable special teams player as well for the Chicago Bears. So that's one of the reasons why I would re-sign Christian Jones. And and once again, I think us converting to a 4-3 kind of helps a guy like Christian Jones. I think if we would have stayed at a 3-4, I don't think the Chicago Bears would even think about re-signing Christian Jones. But I think since we are, in fact, moving to a 4-3, I think that actually helps Christian Jones a lot in terms of re-signing them, and I would definitely re-sign him just just for just 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 because he is also that special teams ace. Number eighteen, we have wide receiver Demir Bird, and just like Marquise Goodwin, uh, kind of underwhelming, honestly. He, uh, they just didn't use him. Once again, this guy's a speedster, um, and just didn't incorporate him enough. I think he is still a young guy that could add some, could be a valuable piece to an offense. Um, and that's honestly up to Ryan Poles. If Ryan Poles does bring back like a Marquise Goodwin or a Demir Bird, I hope Luke Getze uh, incorporates incorporates them more in the offense because they are speed threats. They they are guys that can to spread spread the field, maybe get a deep shot down the field. That that's their game. So, but for me, if I was Ryan Poles, I would let Demir Bird walk. Number 19, we have long snapper Patrick Scales. Like I said, I think Ryan Poles is going to do everything in his power to to keep all the specialists together, which is smart. Um, there's really no reason to replace any of your specialists unless they just keep getting hurt or they decide to retire or maybe they decide to go elsewhere. But if Patrick Scales wants to come back, I would welcome him back and I would resign Patrick Scales. At number 20, we have safety DeAndre Houston Carson. 
honestly, he he played really well, not only as a special team or as a special team's ace, but he played really well when he was called upon um, to play safety in the Chicago Bears defense. He had a pretty good year. Uh, and this is a guy that I think Chicago in general values a lot. And I think as a fan, personally, I love what DHC brings to the Chicago Bears football team, team and the intensity he plays with. Um, and when he's called upon uh, when, when it's as a safety or as a special teamer, he definitely balls out. So I would resign DHC back to the Chicago Bears roster. At number 21, we have offensive lineman Elijah Wilkinson. And this is a guy that you could re-sign him for depth, right? Uh, he's not a bad backup, but you know I wouldn't see him competing for a starting role. Uh, when he when he had his limited reps as a starting role, he he played all right. It wasn't like he was terrible, but I truly feel that Ryan Poles is looking to revamp this Chicago Bears offensive line. So yes, you could re-sign him, right? Not as a starter, but just as a as a backup, right? But I would let Elijah Wilkinson walk. Uh, and maybe try to find other avenues uh, in terms of of backups. And, you know, I'm not going to really talk about Alex Bars today because he's a restricted free agent. I'm only talking about unrestricted. But I would rather re-sign Alex Bars uh, back than Elijah Wilkinson. At number 22, we have cornerback Artie Burns. Once again, this is going to be another huge emphasis for Ryan Poles is the cornerback room. And, and that's what I'm saying. Ryan Poles is under a lot of pressure in his first year. Yes, we have a lot of cat space, but we have a lot of holes to fill. Offensive lineman, cornerback, wide receiver. You can even say defensive line, linebacker. We have a lot of holes to fill to, to hopefully get this Chicago Bears roster where it needs to be to hopefully have them compete as soon, maybe as next year. But when I look at cornerback Artie Burns, I can see them also re-signing him maybe as a backup. I think when he was a starter, he played decent, right? He's not a bad player, but he's not the best player. Um, I think he's good depth, but in the purpose for me, uh, if I was Ryan Poles, I would let Artie Burns walk, especially especially when you have a guy like Thomas Graham Jr. that I think they're going to really give him his opportunity as soon as next season. At number 23, we have linebacker. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name. Joel Iggy, we call him Iggy. His last name is really too hard to sign uh, to to try to read, but I would re-sign Iggy. Honestly, he's been a valuable asset to the special teams, and a lot of people need to remember this. Special teams is a huge deal. Look at look how the San Francisco 49ers beat the Green Bay Packers right in the divisional round. Right, they beat them because their special teams were making plays. So. Iggy has been a consistent special teams player for the Chicago Bears. And once again, us converting 2-4-3, to four, three, you cannot have enough linebackers. And I know a lot of Bears fans may have been saying, why not give Iggy the opportunity to show what he can do, right? And, and I agree. Maybe he's getting beat out, but in in, in this case, what, what can it hurt? Re-sign him to a one-year deal, right? Bring him back and let him compete and see if he can get more playing time on this new 4-3 Chicago Bears defense. At number 24, we have offensive lineman Adam Adam, Adam Redman. Obviously, Adam Redman didn't really get a lot of reps. Uh, he didn't. We don't really have a lot of tape on him. He was basically just a practice player at this point. Uh, so I would let Adam Redman walk. Once again, you could re-sign him. Just see what he does in training camp. Try to let him compete. But I would let Adam Redman walk. At number 25, we have cornerback Marquis Christian. I will let Marquis Christian walk. Uh, there was many times where he was in the game and he just constantly had blown coverages um, and just didn't look good whatsoever. So, And I think this also stems with, once again, I want to see what Thomas Graham Jr. does. And I think the Bears will revamp the cornerback room as well, but I just don't think there's going to be room for a guy like Marquis Christian uh, when – when you look in free agency, uh, the cornerbacks that are entering free agency, um, it's pretty. It's a pretty stacked class. So I would much rather try to add a try to add some quality free agents than re-signing Marquis Christian. At number twenty six, we have defensive lineman uh, Marcus Hunt. Obviously, you could bring a guy back like Marcus Hunt when he got his reps. Uh, he played pretty good football. Uh, he is consistent on the defensive line. Obviously, moving to that 4-3, you're going to need some quality defensive lines, not only as starters, but as rotational pieces. But for this video, I already said that I would re-sign not only Akeem Hicks, but Bilal Nichols. So, And, of course, you have Kyrus Tonga. You have Mario Edwards, Angelo Blackson. So you have a lot of good 
defensive lineman if that's how it shakes out, right? So I would let Marcus Hunt walk. At number 27, we have linebacker Bruce Irving. And Bruce Irving kind of came, uh, was a late, late season signing, came in, played good football for us when we needed him. You know, obviously with Khalil Mack injured, we needed some guys that can come in and, and just compete for, for the Chicago Bears defense. But I would let Bruce Irving walk. Um, I feel like he's a pretty good linebacker, even for his age. But for for the purpose of 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 this video and the purpose of what we're trying to accomplish, I would let Bruce Irving walk because I think we are, in fact, trying to get younger, faster, more explosive, not only on the offense side of the football, but the defensive side as well. And at number 28, we have linebacker Cassius Mars. Once again, it's kind of like Bruce Irving came in, uh, was pretty productive. Obviously, all the Bears fans will know him for that big-time taunting penalty that wasn't taunting against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, but once again, you know, when he came in, when he was called upon, played some valuable reps for the Chicago Bears defense. But I would, in fact, let, let Cassius Mars walk as well. So as you guys can tell, those were the 28 unrestricted free agents. Obviously, the Chicago Bears have restricted free agents, uh, restricted rights free agents, you know, all that different free agent stuff. And obviously, they're going to have to consider if they want to re-sign those guys. For example, uh, Alex Bars is a restricted free agent. I would re-sign Alex Bars for a death piece for the offensive line. He's been around for a while, whatever. But out of the 28 unrestricted free agents, I would choose to bring back 13 of them. Uh, I feel like the 13 guys that I would resign um, are a valuable part of this football team. Rather, if it's the defense side of the football, special teams, or offense side of the ball, I think bringing them back is key to um, hopefully to have a successful season going into next year. And like I said, we only have 37 Chicago Bears under contract. So Ryan Poles has a lot to work to do uh, to fill the holes. But I just want to remind you guys, as Bears fans, I know we're, we get so excited about free agency, right? It's always good to add new, new talent to make the Chicago Bears roster better. But we also need to consider our own free agents in order to make the team better as well because if we just go out and sign a bunch of new guys, right, who knows what's going to happen? I think it's really important to also keep in mind uh, about the players you have and making sure you, you keep these players intact to hopefully – make your team better in the long run. So after listening to the people that the players that I would resign and let walk, I want to ask you guys this, who would you resign and who would you let walk um, as soon as the new league year begins? I want to hear from you guys make sure you comment down below in the comment section. I can't wait to hear you, what you guys say. But before I let you guys go, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification to get all Bears content around the podcast. Make sure you follow me on all my social media platforms. Make sure you share this episode of Kick on the Mic with every single Bears fan that you know. But other than that, I'll be up for an all new Bears podcast right here on Kick on the Mic. Thanks, guys, and bear down. You ain't about it, you ain't about it, you ain't kick on the mic. You ain't about it, you ain't about it, you ain't kick on the mic. You can go and subscribe because I'll be on it 